Good morning. Welcome back to the Breakfast Club. It's so good to see you this morning. I hope you are all well. I am Dorothy King and the Breakfast Club is our window in the morning to get fresh ideas on how to grow, thrive and connect. So today I decided to have a breakfast book club because I found this really amazing book yesterday on the street. And this is one thing I really love about living in Basel, Switzerland, that people leave these amazing things on the street they no longer need. It's not crap, but it's usually very helpful, useful things for others. And it's also not like Amazon, where you get this thing like, oh, you bought this, so you might like that. Or on YouTube, where you like, you watch the breakfast club, so you might also like other breakfast clubs. No, you just get random books. So I found this book from 1984. It's by Robert Fritz, the founder of DMA, The Path of Least Resistance, Learning to Become the Creative Force in Your Own Life. What I really liked about it, I just started reading it, is that he points out two different versions on how you can live your life. Version A is that you are very responsive and reactive to what is going on in your surrounding. For example, it's like, oh, I had a terrible t childhood, so I am deciding to study psychology. Or my parents were very poor, so I am trying to make enough money. Or I am very hungry, so I go out to eat. Or <laughs> And it goes on like that and that. So if you just have the feeling that you're reacting and responding to your environment, Use the same old systems and mechanisms to find solutions to our problems <laughs> and we create those problems and we solve them with what we already know. So while we are on this path that we know and then we feel a bit better and then there's a new problem and then we find a better job or we find something better to eat and so on and so forth. But on the long run we are just responding and reacting to whatever comes from the outside or what we feel is coming from the outside. And this is one way how you can live your life. And some people do that very successfully. So over time, what Robert Fritz was observing is that these people get angry, even though they are very nice and they're always really reacting and responding to what's going on and they're doing their best and they are very successful. They get angry because they feel so powerless. And even though they might have the super job, they might have the super surrounding, everything is perfect because they did everything right. They don't feel happy inside. And maybe you have also noticed that in your own life, that something might be missing. And then when we try to fix that with like, okay, let's move to a bigger house, let's move to another country, let's find a new job, let's find a new partner, let's find a new hobby to make me feel better, that doesn't really help. We might feel better a little bit, but then we're like back again. And then it's like this loop, oscillation, he calls that. And on the other side, there's this other way how we could live our life, and that's creation. And he brings very, and he brings very intense examples from the arts and the music. As a painter is sitting in front of this blank canvas, <laughs> waiting for his ideas to come and then he's creating something new. Or a composer composing something out of the nothing and then there's something there. That might sound a bit pathetic and theatrical, but uh, as an artist I can relate to that as well. And the idea of creation is not that you just sit there and then all of a sudden the muse kiss you and then you know what you're doing. No, usually artists, they have something in mind. They have a vision. They know where they are going. For example, Georgia O'Keeffe, she usually said, oh, I'm not going to start to paint until I am completely sure what I want to do. Otherwise, it's a waste of paint. So you're not like diggling along, trying things out. No, you know what you want. You know where to go to. You have that vision and then you start and this is how creation usually works and he also and that's the big difference what robert fritz is pointing out that it's not about problem solving in creation it's about creating something new just for the sake of it just for the love of it just because you can artists already know that nobody needs a painting but they do it anyway because they have this urge to create something or whatever that is artists do nowadays. And 
On the contrary, the responsors and the reactors, they are like, oh, I need a new sofa. I need a health insurance. I need this. I need that. And then they create things. They don't create things, but they buy things or react to things or shape their life around rather needs, not things they want to make just out of pure love and out of curiosity if they could and can. And the interesting way, I think, what Robert Fritz is suggesting, that we could apply this method of creation, not only as artists in our production of artworks, but to our everyday life. And envision, how do, we, how do I want to live? How do I want my relationships to look like? How do I want to work? And not feel like, oh, what is the job market? I should find a job that suits my money because I have to make X, Y, Z so I can have that lifestyle. No, he suggests like, that's my vision. And then I go there, not reacting and responding, but creating from slate. And what I think is very interesting, because he said, we know the path of reacting, response and problem solving. That's like the path we know. So it's like a, almost an autobahn and you, you just go there because you are so used to it. But if you are on that autobahn of problem solving, responding, uh, reacting, you can't really get out. So he suggests that we go on the other path and create a complete new path that we haven't walked on before that is easier than just to try to change the autobahn into a park. He says it's easier to leave that where it is and create a new path of new creation for a new lifestyle. I haven't been through the whole book, <laughs> so I can't give you the answer of how exactly you actually do that. But I thought it's very interesting to think about your life more as a creator than a responser. And today's homework could be think about how it would feel to create your life, to your relationships, your job, your everyday life, your everyday, instead of just reacting and responding to outward surroundings and needs. Have fun with that. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.